the 2022 Our American Voice Virtual Summit. We are so happy you can all be with us today. My name is John Fontanetta. I am the program director for Our American Voice, and it is my pleasure to be with all of you. The theme for this year's summit is OAV Students, Our Legacy. Every generation leaves behind a legacy. What that legacy will be is determined by the people in that generation. And that quote is from the very great John Lewis. To begin our, our summit, we have a very special message to you from J.B. Pritzker, the governor of Illinois. Hi, I'm Governor J.B. Pritzker. It's my pleasure to speak with you all today and congratulate you on completing your year in OAV. While this has most certainly been a challenging school year for all, what you've achieved is truly remarkable because each and every one of you has gone above and beyond. You've not only been dedicated to your classes, but you've been dedicated to understanding the importance of civic engagement. And now you're taking what you learned and turning it into action. This year, you studied citizenship and the importance of working collaboratively. You learned that with our rights and freedoms come responsibilities. And you've come to understand that when we participate in the democratic process, we're using our American voice. Your creativity and passion to learn helps define who we are in Illinois. I'm so proud of you. So I would ask you to continue to work towards shaping a brighter future for our classrooms, for our communities, and for our state. And while your time in OAV is coming to an end, this is only the beginning of your civics experience. Be thoughtful and be bold. I'm looking forward to seeing all that you achieve. It is now my pleasure to introduce to you the chair of the Bearer Education Foundation, and the person most responsible for us being here today, Ms. Sheila Smith. Good morning. This year, we dedicated the OAB program to Chicago police officer Ella French and Charles Smith. Ella died way too early, and John Fontanetta will speak about why she is such a role model for the OAB students. My brother Charles was one of the first voices in creating the Our American Voice program. He raised his concern to me regarding the lack of civic learning and engagement in the education of our young people. Charles not only talked the talk about the importance of civics, but he also walked the walk all of his life. He was a contributor and a supporter of the OAV program till he passed away. I would like to share some remarks that Senator Dick Durbin made on the Senate floor after Charles died. Mr. President, I would like to take a few moments today to say farewell to a friend and a public servant who served my state of Illinois and our nation. His name was Charles Carroll Smith, but his friends called him Charlie. He died the day after Thanksgiving in 2020. Charlie was the firstborn and only son in a family of three children. When he was 11, his father decided that the Smith family home should be a laboratory for democracy. They would discuss important events at the dinner table and once a week they would have a meeting to vote on matters involving the family. After just two of these family meetings, Charlie had an epiphany he told his sisters, Sheila and Catherine, you know, if we three kids stick together, we can outvote mom and dad. He said, I want a bike. What do you want? Charlie figured out what both of his sisters wanted and how to deliver it. At the next family meeting, the girls supported Charlie's proposal to buy a bike. And Charlie got that bike. The Smith family never held another vote because their mom said it was time to go back to a dictatorship. But Charlie would go on to use his coalition building schools in the interest of public service 
for the rest of his life. Well, let me shift gears just for a second. I'm not encouraging you to go home tonight and do with your family what my brother Charles did at our dinner table. I am encouraging you to continue to raise your voices on issues that matter to you and your community. Returning to Senator Durbin's remarks, in 1978, Charlie joined the US Army and served as an intelligence officer in Vietnam. Our paths crossed often over the years when Charlie was the legislative director and national security advisor to then Illinois Senator Alan Dixon and later to Senator Wendell Ford from Kentucky. Charlie helped craft and pass many important pieces of legislation when he worked for Senators Dixon and Ford. In 1995, he served as the executive director of the Defense Base Closure and Realignment Commission, which was charged with realigning all of America's military bases with the realities of the post-Cold War world. Charlie was never too busy to listen. I and all of the members of the Illinois congressional delegation appreciated his willingness to always consider fairly our explanations about the national security importance of the military bases in our state. I have never met anyone with a greater understanding of the workings of the Defense Department and the ability to translate that knowledge into plain English. That's what Senator Durbin had to say about my brother. Now let me conclude. Charles often said to me that the OAV students are the hope and future of our country. He was right. You are indeed our hope and future. You are your teacher's legacy and your legacy is what you have done on your projects this year because you are impacting the community and the next generation of students. Thank you for what you have accomplished this year and what you will do in the future because I know there are many Charles Smiths in the audience today. Stay engaged, keep on listening and make a difference. We need you. Thank you, Ms. Smith for inspiring us with your brother Charles Smith's story of public service. The second person we chose to dedicate our work to this year is Officer Ella French of the Chicago Police Department. Officer French was tragically killed in the line of duty on August 7, 2021, right before the start of this school year. Officer French is the daughter of Elizabeth French, a teacher at one of our OAV schools. The students, staff, and school community of Piper School were deeply impacted by this terrible loss and they chose to do an action project to support their local police department. They, they wanted to find a way to bring about something positive out of their loss. Ella often said she was a work in progress and was always finding ways to become a better person. She took the time to know others and to connect with them on a human level. She said no one should claim they cannot learn from others or change for the better. Your work in OAV this year did exactly that. Ella loved being a police officer and loved animals. She rescued many dogs. This year, Mattoon Middle School chose for their action project to support an animal shelter and pet fostering. Ella would have loved that project. At her funeral, Cardinal Supid said, let us all take a step back and put aside any impulse that would divide us. That begins by claiming responsibility for each other, no matter where we live in the city. Officer French dedicated herself to bringing positive change to her community. That is exactly the goal of our American voice. She is an inspiration to us all. A legacy is something left behind for future generations. Charles Smith and Officer Ella French have left us all a legacy of dedication and service to others. 
You and your teachers are the legacy OAV leaves behind. Your communities and schools have been forever changed because of you. You may never know the positive impact you have had on another person, but I promise you it is there. OAV has also had a positive impact on you in many ways. Here are some of the things students and teachers have said about how OAV has changed them. I love teaching our school about how we can help refugees. I learned the importance of giving and caring. OAV is a great program for our students to exercise their rights and use their voice and make a difference in our world, one student at a time. I learned through OAV to voice my opinion in a respectful way. My friends and I might not always have the same opinion and that's okay. OAV helped me to make new friends and have fun while staying on track to accomplish our goal. OAV has changed me because it has taught me problem solving. It showed me that working together can make a bigger impact instead of just one person. Next slide, please. The true heroes of OAV are your amazing teachers. Every day they share their talents and time with you and go beyond the classroom to help you become the great citizens you are. As I read your teacher's name, please give him or her a great cheer and round of applause and thanks for all they do. From Prairie Trail School, Miss April Ann Lynch. From Irving School, Miss Tricia Stevens. From Clark School, Miss Rosanna Cardenas. From Iroquois West, Mr. Jeff Sheehan. From Kamensky School, Miss Ashley Pesh. From Solomon School, Miss Deborah Lynch. From Central Middle School, Ms. Maura Raleigh. From Salmonac School, Mr. Eric Roberts. From Arcola Junior High, Ms. Brianne Reinhardt. From Pershing School, Ms. Lisa Beth Patsky. From Hiawatha School, Ms. Chrissy Ivnik. From Kamensky School, Ms. Liana Giamino. From Du Bois School, Ms. Tanika Dupree. From Heritage and Emerson Schools, Mr. Michael Della Croce. From Piper School, Ms. Carla Schwartz. From Choice National Academy, Ms. Talisha Fogel Simon, and that pictured, Ms. Mia Williams. From Mattoon Middle School, Ms. Sarah Madison. And from Lewis School, Mr. Abraham Scott. Thank you once again to all of our teachers. Um, you are so fantastic. And we at OAV and the Bear Education Foundation are all applauding and clapping for you right now. We now have a message from your Illinois State Representative, Rodney Davis. Hello, our American Voice students. I'm Congressman Rodney Davis, and I have the pleasure of serving Illinoisans from our state's 13th Congressional District here in Washington, DC. The OAV program you have just completed shows that you can make a difference, no matter how big or small the issue, doesn't it feel good to be engaged and, and kind of flex your freedom of speech? As I'm sure you've learned, many parts of the world do not share the same freedoms that we Americans have. During your education on civics, 
I know your teachers have taught you the value of having your own voice. In a world where we seem to be more divided than ever, I encourage you to continue to ask the difficult questions and come to your own conclusions. Meaningful and civil engagements are what this country was focused on and founded on. I want to congratulate all of you and your teachers on completing your individual projects. Thank you for your passion and your commitment. It does not go unnoticed even by all of us here in the U.S. House of Representatives in Washington, D.C. Thanks, good luck, and dream big. Thank you, Representative Davis. Civics action projects can be separated into four main categories, civic responsibility, human rights responsibility, environmental responsibility, and emotional responsibility. Your projects have this year have addressed all these areas in some ways. Find your project on this chart. Do you agree with the area in which it appears? And could it also appear in one or more areas? We now have a special treat for you. Get ready to see a video presentation of all the OAV projects this year that was created by Mr. Michael Composo from the presentations that you sent us about your projects. Enjoy looking for your project, but also pay attention to the great work done by OAV students from schools all across Illinois and Texas. You are part of a big OAV family. Hello, we are Irving's OAV Club. This year we had two projects. Our first project was to create a fundraiser to help Piper's OAV and raise money for the Berwyn Police Explorers Program in honor of Officer Ella French. We created a Principal for the Day raffle and raised $250. For our next project, we partnered with Irving's PTO to promote our new little food pantry to people in need. The pandemic has caused many people to lose their jobs and they be, may be in need of food or hygiene products. PTO and OAV Club are here to help. This Saturday, April 30th, for our Army Day, from 9 o'clock to 11 we are going to unveil our Please come and join in on the celebration. Our OAV Club will food drive in the future and will help stock the food pantry. So if there is anyone in need, they can take what they want. We must all have heart to help! that takes place on April 22nd. Every year, Earth Day is important because it brings people together to, keep, to raise awareness on how to keep the Earth clean. It also brings awareness on how to keep the animals on Earth. I had an empty water bottle or extra plastic bag from the grocery store. Well, there are many different types of items you can recycle. You can recycle plastic water bottles, plastic bags, bags, glass, cardboard boxes, and more. You can also find other items you can use instead. For example, reusable water bottles and reusable shopping bags. Recycling and reusable items, using reusable items, helps keep the earth safe 
and the animal safety. Sarah is a company that makes candies such as sugar cones, <laughs> lemon heads, fudge strip cookies, nerd ropes, Girl Scout cookies, and more. The candy they sell is organic. Forever is located right next to Bur Berwyn in Forest Park. It's a member of How to Recycle. With How to Recycle, Forever puts labels on their candy bags to tell buyers how to recycle candy box properly. This is important because Ferreira is sharing how, how is on how to properly recycle candy bags. Now, after my um, co-workers have said this, I need to say something. We need your help to save the earth and clean it and yeah. community project was on raising awareness and money for refugees in Chicago. Did you know that refugees are people who have been forced to leave their homeland due to war, persecution, and or natural disasters? Sadly, because of the end of the war in Afghanistan and the war currently happening in Ukraine, the number of refugees have been increased. So our class made a slideshow presentation and showed it to all the students I saw. We also made a simulation about the journey of a refugee we showed it to the 4th through 8th graders. All of our proceeds and donations will be given to Exodus World Service, which is a nonprofit organization that provides food, furniture, clothing, grocery, baby, baby items, and etc. to re new refugees. Our goal is to donate $5,000. It's a wonderful to help others and bring hope and love to those in need.
This year, we chose the project in honor of a Chicago police officer, Ella Frank. She loved her job as a police officer because she was able to help so many people. It was important to us that we keep her legacy alive. We got in touch with the Burma Police Department and asked for advice on the best way to help. They suggested we raise money for their police explorers program. This program introduces a career in law enforcement to high school students and young adults. Together with another school in our district, we raised close to fifteen hundred. We will present a check to the Burma Police Department soon. We would like to thank we would like to thank our families, our Pepper School community, and most importantly, all the first responders who work tirelessly to keep our community safe. Hi, my name is Drew Talbert from the Iroquois West Middle School in Onaga, Illinois. I am in 7th grade. Our action project for OAV was our flagpole needed a light and a new flag. This caused the flag to be hidden in the darkness of the night. This project is important to me because it will improve the look of our school and our principal is an army veteran and it will show our pride for our nation. We needed to raise money for the lightened flag, so we sold shamrock shakes from McDonald's at lunch. This gave us enough funding to buy the light and the flag. We researched flagpole lights and flags. We found a light that is solar powered and screws on top of the flagpole. We also found an all weather nylon flag. The light and flag were well rated and in our budget. For OEV, we had a mini project of cleaning up our school garden. We cleaned the garden of pine needles and trash so students could actually enjoy it. We are fourth and fifth grade school or in our American Voice program. OAV is a program that teaches students about our government and society. We've been working on projects throughout the school year um, to make our school better and the state. Our biggest project was to help those experiencing homelessness. We meet every Monday after school to learn more about Sibet. We learn things like the Bill of Rights and the history of the Constitution. We learn first about different struggles of various groups in our country, such as LGBTQ community, well, the LGBTQ community, and segregated, segregation in the past. This is where we learn about past of Lake County, an organization that helps people experiencing homelessness. For our final project, pre project, we presented, we made a presentation about homelessness and presented it to the whole school. We also started a fundraiser to, to help those in need. We learned that there are many reasons why people may experience homelessness. It can happen to those who, who have lost their homes due to disasters such as fires, bad weather, and floods. We also learned that being homeless or unhomed doesn't mean that you are bad or lazy. It just means that you have a struggle in your life right now. We contacted PEDS to set up a fundraiser to help those in our area that are either unhomed or are experiencing homelessness. We are going to collect our goal of 100 items to bring to PEDS to help those in need. We are excited to present to you our project and we are excited about helping those in need. Team middle school OAV group and we're here to talk about what we're doing. Every year a new group is created and the people who decide to join will participate in a few short lessons and then find that you can make the community better. OAV is important because it gives those in need or provides solutions to a problem. This year we are helping out the Cold County Animal Shelter by giving donations. The animal shelter is underfunded and will we plan to try and fix that. We are holding a coin war until May 5th. In the coin war, grades will compete to see which can raise the most money. After it ends, the money will be delivered by the OAB group to the animal shelter on a trip to see what animals we are helping. To help gather the donations, we have put videos into sections of the morning announcements, put up posters in the halls, and created locker tags that you might see around the school. 
We hope that you can see that this project means a lot to us, and we would like to see us reach our goal. Be responsible, be respectful, be safe, and we will all be successful. And remember, it's a great day to be a Wildcat. We're renovating Finding Heroes Park. Finding Heroes Park is a memorial for veterans who fought in the American Wars. The finding portion can help identify geography through navigation. Why we are doing this is because this park is meaningful to the community. This park has many things for generations to learn more and more about the country and world's important history. Each and every plaque has important information or different pieces of history. This park holds a lot of meaning within the community filled with history for newer generations to learn and others who want to learn more about history. Children in all ages may be able to learn and it will improve with a few fixes. For new nor dust, not wrecked park, new plaques, so the park is very important to our community, will be an amazing way for others to learn more about history. The place we are doing this is Finding Heroes Park, Samnac, Illinois, Orange Street. Putting Finding Heroes Park in the 21st century by explaining all of the plaques that are about navigation and our heroes. We started this project in February 2022. We came up with the idea for sprucing up Finding Heroes Park. Then we got in contact with the treasurer, Jay Rudd, and he came in and spoke to us about the person who created the park, Tom Warren, and whose vision it was to talk about two of his passions, navigation and war memorials around the world. With those descriptions, we were we were working with DeKalb County out and about, and on that app, we will describe all of the stands in the park for people to view so that the park will be put into the 21st century. We have also used My Earth to make mark pins to describe different parts of Finding Heroes. We are Club OAV Salmonac Chapter. The people who are going to be doing this project are 5th and 6th graders from Salmonac Middle School. Jay Rudd, treasurer of Finding Heroes Park, and yeah, Yep, Two Point Pro of DeKalb. Our to help our community and our school. We want to promote good citizenship at Heritage Middle School and Emerson. This OIV club is in Berwyn, Cook County, Illinois. Our school has donated over $300 to Sarah Circle, helping homeless women and children. We created posters supporting our cause and put them around the school, encouraging them to donate money to Sarah Circle. We are celebrating on April 22nd to be grateful to have clean air, land, trees, food, and water. Senator Gaylord Nelson created Earth Day because he wanted to appreciate the Earth. The first Earth Day ever created was on April 22nd, 1970. Before Earth Day was created, people would dump trash and garbage into, into rivers and the ocean. Dumping into rivers was perfectly legal back then, but now it is illegal to dump large amounts of garbage. 2022 marks 52 years since the very first Earth Day. We are fourth and fifth graders from Clark Elementary in Waukegan. Our goal was to help our school community and the local community. With many COVID restrictions in place, we tried to find the best ways in which we could help. Our first contribution to our school community was in December. We helped distribute books and holiday gifts to over 100 students. Our second act of service to our school community was when we hosted a bingo night. 
We created bingo cards to reflect concepts taught in kinder. At the event, we advocated for the homeless and shared our goal to help feed them. Families from our school community helped us raise funds through popcorn and water sales. Once it was time to shop, we made sure we stayed within our budget. We compared prices and made sure we had enough food to feed 25 people. We visited the chapel in Libertyville and made lunches for the homeless. Each bag included a cheerful note. We also helped set up pads, restock shelves with clean towels, and sorted toilet trees. Through civic engagement, we learned some life skills such as planning, budgeting, speaking in front of crowds, and teamwork. We hope we can inspire others to become involved in their local communities. Hello, we are the John Lewis Middle School Cadets in Waukegan, Illinois. Our social project today is addressing gang violence. Gang violence increases the level of crimes in communities, sets a bad, bad example towards kids in the areas. On the outside, they created, they created an image of respect. However, in reality, gang members drop out of school, abuse drugs, and end up in jail. A nearby community, Chicago, is one of the most gang infested cities in the entire country. Studies show approximately 100,000 gang members are active from nearly 60 factions. In 2011, gang gangs were responsible for approximately 61% of the homicides in Chicago. What we're doing about this issue is trying to spread awareness about gang violence. We're doing this so by making posters, skits, and this presentation, flyers, and most importantly, a fundraiser. So far, we've educated ourselves on gang violence, and with that knowledge, we're educating others as well. We hope you also spread the word as well to lower gang violence. What you can do to help is donate to our fundraiser that we're doing. This fundraiser will help those who are affected by gang violence. We will donate all the money we get to the group Strike for Peace. They're trying to help people in many ways, which will prevent gang violence or reduce it. Another thing you can do is spread awareness as well. Donating will help support people who are victims of gang violence. You can also donate to other GoFundings that support stopping gang violence. what we were going to do. We thought of doing things like a bake sale or a lock-in in our school, but we thought that the best idea would be a garage sale because it had more benefits than any other and it would be, um, we wouldn't have to spend much money to, so our people in our school would um, donate. We made posters and put them around the school and we're doing a contest to see what grade brings more items and that grade will get a price. For our garage sale project, me, Gerardo, and Bella decided that we would email the administration, Coach Lindsay, um, the News Gazette, to contact everybody who needed to know that we were doing this project and to get a hold of the newspaper to advertise it and just to get it to our community. We also were working on trying to find out like when we are supposed to do that and where. Um, 
put the main posters to put around the school. We sent out an email to uh, high school and junior high, and I also helped with sorting and counting how many donations we got. Um, so my group and I helped find an organization that would help the people in Ukraine um, to have new essentials and hygiene products, and we ended up finding Convoy of Hope. And we contacted our principal in order to help us pay for the prizes that we would give to students who help donate. The reason we picked the Garage Shelf Project is we wanted to help people in our town by them like buying stuff for a cheap price that they might not be able to afford otherwise. And we're going to give any extra stuff to a charity foundation like Goodwill. But we also wanted to help out globally. So with all the money we get from the garage sale, we're going to use them to give it to an organization that sends care packages to the people in Ukraine. We are now going to prepare for an exciting time where you will be able to talk with students from your group and other schools about what civics engagement can do. First, we're going to be watching a short video uh, called Unpacking Civics Engagement. Uh, then you're gonna have a student discussion in a breakout group, which will last for 20 minutes. And then we're gonna ask each group to come back with some major takeaways that they had during their discussion to share with everyone. In a second, we're going to be starting the Unpacking Civics Engagement uh, video. And while you're watching this, we ask you to consider these questions because this is what you're going to be talking about in your breakout sessions. So the first question is, what does it mean to be actively engaged in civics? Secondly, how did OAV help you to be actively engaged? Third, what did you gain as a person from your civics engagement? Fourth, how could your project uh, that you chose this year move into one of the other three areas of communi community social responsibilities? So if your project was for the environment, how might it move towards um, civics action, if it was uh, one for emotional responsibilities, how might it move towards uh, another one of the four areas? And then finally, if you have some time, uh, we'd like you to talk a little bit about uh, the bonus question, which is, what was your favorite OAV lesson this year and why? We'd like to hear back from you some of your responses. And uh, some people have really liked um, the lessons that involved the music. Uh, some said, you know, I'm, I'm more than you see. So you can think about what was your favorite lesson. So now we're going to go ahead and all take a look at this video before we go to our breakout groups. Unpacking civic engagement. You may have heard the expression civic engagement, but what does it mean? Over the next few minutes, we want you to unpack the gist of this word and to think about its relevance to your success in college and beyond. Let's start with a definition. Civic engagement is a broad term used to describe active participation in the public life of a community. Being civically engaged means that your actions are informed, committed, and constructive, and that they benefit not only you, but also your community. There are a lot of ways for you to be civically engaged. You can serve or volunteer with a community nonprofit organization, governmental agency, or public school. You can take a service learning or community-based research course. These kinds of courses link classroom learning to action that addresses community issues. You can learn about community issues that are important to you and advocate for change to policy that affects these issues. And you can vote in local, state, and national elections for individuals who represent your personal interests and the interests of your community. Note that I've used the word community seven times since the beginning of this video. Communities are at the center of civic engagement. 
Take a few moments to think about the communities to which you belong. What images pop into your mind? Your family? Your friends? The neighborhood where you live? A group or organization of which you're a member, like your house of worship or a student club? As a member of a community, sometimes you give and at other times you receive. This kind of cyclical give and take relationship is described as reciprocal. Take a few more seconds to think about the reciprocal relationship you have with your communities. In other words, what do you contribute to and what do you gain from your communities? Do you contribute your time, your knowledge about a specific topic, your money, your skills? Do you gain the same kinds of tangible and intangible help, or do you gain something different? Keeping in mind the reciprocal relationship you have with your communities, think of some ways that actively participating in the public life of your communities, that is, being civically engaged, can or will contribute to your success. Here's what the research says. Do your thoughts resemble any of these findings? Civic engagement and academic achievement are linked. Involved students get higher grades and they're more likely to pass courses and to stay in school. Civically engaged adults have higher self-esteem and a sense that they can overcome difficulties and achieve their goals in life. They have larger social networks and greater social support, as well as having a greater appreciation for the diversity in their communities and a greater sense of belonging. Through their civic activities, individuals gain skills in communication, planning, decision making, leadership, and other areas. And being civically engaged can give individuals a sense of identity, meaning, direction, and purpose. Let's review the key takeaways from this lesson. One, civic engagement is a broad term that describes making informed decisions and taking informed action that benefits you and your community as a whole. Two, you're already a member of many communities. The question is, are you taking a positive, active role in those communities? There are many ways to get involved, including, but not limited to, service, academic coursework, advocacy, and voting. Choose one or more and take action. Three, civic engagement is linked to academic achievement, resiliency, and sense of purpose. Individuals who are more engaged in their communities have greater social support systems and are, therefore, better able to cope with and overcome challenges. So, if you're not already taking an active role in your communities, Think about and seek out the ways to get involved. Doing so may help you be successful in college and beyond. Check out these resources for ideas on how to get started. Okay, it's now time for us to begin going into our breakout groups to discuss these questions. So we're going to be talking about what does uh, it mean to be actively engaged in civics? Um, how did OAV help you become actively engaged in your school or community? And here you might share, uh, were there areas that you weren't normally thinking about before becoming uh, OAV that got you in touch with people or organizations that uh, were new to you? Um, what did your community or school uh, benefit from your uh, OAV project. So did you have a lasting effect on uh, your school or your community? Did you hear from any other people about um, the, the, the good things and the positive change that your uh, project uh, brought about? And then uh, a really important one is, how did you gain as from being a part of OAV and from being civically engaged? Um, did it change you a little bit as a person? And then uh, finally, uh, we can talk a little bit about, uh, if you have time, about um, some of your favorite lessons and why the, that lesson um, was important to you. So remember, teachers, we're going to try to gather at least three responses that we'd like to uh, type in the chat box when we return. Um, and it, once again, 
you were sent links by your group leader in each breakout session. So when you click on that link, it should take you to the session. But if you have difficulty or you're unable to, um, to connect, I would suggest that you not spend a lot of time trying to figure it out. Just go ahead and have your discussion among your own group and, and we'll check back with you then. So here are some of the comments so far. I gained the belief that I can help create a better world from Solomon's school. Students said that participating in OAV helped to build their own confidence and it was like being part of a family. From Prairie Trail and Clark, what does it mean to be actively engaged in civics? It means to donate, to support others, community service, and taking action in our environment. From uh, Iroquois West and their group, students shares how it gave them a more positive mindset and it gave them more confidence. Uh, from Solomon School, one of the favorite lessons was creating the park um, that had to satisfy the needs of many people. That is one of our most popular lessons. Uh, from Arcola, Dawson said that OAV helps you build empathy, great word for others, by thinking about what the community really needs. Uh, from Arcola and Emerson's group, students said that they gained confidence, they became leaders and community trust through civics engagement. We also learned that the small things can benefit all. Uh, this is from uh, the group that had Lewis School in it. Students recalled various assignments and talked about their favorites. They met with a group of kids from another part of Illinois and talked about how they uh, feel. From Prairie Trail and Clark, as a person, we gained social skills. We learned to talk to others. We became braver as we taught others. That's, that's fantastic. I know a lot of people have said about OAV is that they were a little bit afraid to speak in front of groups and that really helped their confidence. Uh, Emma from Arcola said that OAV has made her feel even more optimistic and open-minded about how she can help out and make a difference, something we really need in our world today. Uh, favorite lessons from the Pershing um, uh, group uh, are music and change and the uh, perspective for the big box store and the lesson on state, local, and federal government levels. Um, from Solomon, we gained respect and empathy for refugees. Uh, this was from the group that had Iro uh, Iroquois West School in it. Students shared that OAV helped them volunteer uh, in more community events and help their neighbors. Uh, in the group that I was in with, with Irving and Choice, um, someone said that my parents are very proud of me. More than one person said that for caring for my community and that I'm treated more as an adult in conversations at home. Uh, someone in my group said that um, the Bill of Rights Amendment was their, their favorite, and that they said that um, through this lesson, um, they learned about how things used to be very different in the past, and they, they changed as time went on, and that was because of the work of a lot of people. From Prairie Trail and Clark, our projects can, can grow into a permanent change when our fourth graders spread the word and encourage their classrooms, classmates to join uh, in when they uh, in fifth grade and bring more awareness to our community more people can then join the fundraisers and better support the cause Ooh, from uh question number three uh to keep a legacy alive knowing and uh, raising awareness about a problem and now we have uh, a special video from lieutenant governor Juliana Stratton for you. Hello, OAV students. I'm Lieutenant Governor Juliana Stratton and I use she, her pronouns. And it's my pleasure to speak with you today. 
As Lieutenant Governor, I'm passionate about serving you and your communities and ensuring everyone in Illinois has a seat at the table. And that's why I'm so inspired to see such enthusiasm about civics from young people in our great state. Through OAV's program, I've been told that you've taken the first step towards understanding not only what public service can accomplish, but what a public servant like myself can do to help bring about change in Illinois. My guess is that you may have had some healthy discussions with your classmates and teachers on how to go about all of this. It's not easy, right? It's hard work, but I know that you're up for the challenge. I'd like to thank our teachers for preparing students for this journey and showing the value of civics. And to you, the students, congratulations on finishing a program that has taught you the importance of giving back. Does it feel good? I bet it does. You are the future of Illinois. And my hope is that you will take what you have learned and spread it to your other classmates and friends. Thank you for letting me speak with you today. And I can't wait to see the incredible impact that you'll have right here in Illinois. Wow, what a great message from Lieutenant Governor Stratton. Um, we have now come to the end of the 2022 OAV Virtual Summit. Uh, Ms. Smith has some closing remarks to share with you before we leave. Thank you, John. On behalf of the Barra Education Board me members, I would like to thank all of our donors who support this program. I would also like to thank Governor Pritzker, Lieutenant Governor Stratton, and Congressman Davis for participating today. But a very special thank you goes to John Fontanetta, Mary Farmer, Jan Berdoulas, and Michael Capazio for making this summit happen, <laughs> because without them, this wouldn't have happened. Neither would the program happen without John. But to you, our teachers and students, you are so special. You do give us hope. You've kept the foundation in this program with what you have accomplished. We wouldn't be here if not for you. And I thank you and I encourage you to keep getting involved and staying engaged. Take care and be safe and have a good summer after you finish school. Thank you. Thank you, Sheila. As we, say, as we say goodbye to you for this school year, remember that your journey as great citizens is yes. not ending. It's just beginning. Continue to make your families, schools, and communities proud. Um, you have made us so proud in all that you do. Teachers, thank you so much. Uh, we love you all, and we certainly appreciate all that you uh, have gone through in these last few years. And also on top of that, keeping OAV alive. So uh, thank you all very much and goodbye. Have a great summer.